You're here, I'm Queer, and welcome back to my channel. For this video, we will be customizing the new Gen 3 Cathy Noir from Monster High. I have been seeing this doll everywhere and I'm just so obsessed with her. I love her skin, I love her face, I love her body, and honestly, I feel like out of all of the new Gen 3, her and Venus have like the best factory paint like so far. The fashion for her like the other Gen 3 is a little... After I saw her doll, I was just so inspired to like customize her and make her my muse for something. I remember this trend a few months back where they would dress up as the Tom and Jerry female cat, like the white one with the purple bow. Everyone was just killing it with the looks. Everyone just looks so good. Just the vibes of everything was just so amazing. The edits are so nice. And it just got me so inspired. And I kind of wanted to participate with that trend, um, my own version, using my dolls. I remember watching Tom and Jerry and I was so obsessed with it. And anytime there is a female cat, whether it's Miss Toodles Galore or some other female cat, I was just so captivated because they were just so elegant and so poised and they were just honestly not at the same level of Tom, which is over here. They're like eons above Tom. They're just so classy and I'm just so obsessed with them. I was kind of looking up all of the female cats in Tom and Jerry and there wasn't really a lot, but I noticed that there wasn't really like a black female cat in Tom and Jerry. I may be wrong, so please let me know in the comments below if I am. There was a male black cat though, which was um, Tom's kind of like rival. So I thought why not do this makeup trend using Miss Cathy Noir. And this is actually a fun collaboration with Miss Savannah Alexandra Art here on YouTube and also on Instagram. So we're both making a female cat doll that is inspired by Tom and Jerry and I just love Miss Savannah. Her art is also very very vintage vibes and I'm just so drawn to it so I definitely recommend that you guys check her out and check out her doll. I will have her link down below and also here at the iCard. And we're kind of like on the same page with the vibes that we're trying to achieve with our Tom and Jerry female cats. I want the concept of this doll to just be very soft overall with the vibe. And I was really, really inspired with the Selkie dresses. I want her vibe to be very cute, very delicate, very coquettish. Of course, we cannot forget about her bow in the back. I feel like the bow really like makes it. Overall, I want to give her a short hairstyle and overall I want her to kind of have a vintage doll look to her. And speaking of vintage, you guys know I love a good maximalist vintage decor as you can see. And I've been playing a game that's been giving me so much inspiration that I wanted to share with you guys. June's Journey is such an engaging and aesthetically pleasing game, especially if you're into murder mystery. And I want to say a huge thank you to them for sponsoring this video. June's Journey transports you back to the dazzling 1920s, following June Parker as she unravels the mystery behind her sister's murder. The artwork is absolutely stunning. Every scene is like stepping into into a vintage postcard, a painting. I mean, look at all these details. I just found that hidden object. The intricate details makes everything so rewarding. And the best part, you get to decorate your own mansion and garden. It's my little escape after a busy day and it feels so satisfying to see it all come together. You can join in on this adventure for free. Download June's Journey on Android, iOS, or PC through Facebook games. Or click on the link down below or scan the QR code on the screen. Trust me, you will fall in love with the art, the story, the vintage vibes, and the mystery. And again, thank you to June's Journey for sponsoring this video. Now let's go ahead and get started on our perfect feline. Here we have our muse for this video, which is Miss Cathy Noir, and she looks absolutely amazing. I mean, look at, just look at her. She is just giving, and I am just so obsessed with her, and I just cannot wait to work on her and customize her. Let's go ahead and clean her up and let's start with removing her factory hair. Car, 
I want to take a moment and really admire the beauty of this face up for Miss Caddy Noir. I feel like this is really the best out of G3. So now let's go ahead and remove it. <laughs> So I just finished cleaning up Miss Caddy Noir and she is so freaking gorgeous. I am obsessed with this sculpt. I do wish that her joints are a little bit softer to pose because they're a little bit difficult, but maybe over time, the more you like play around with it, the more you bend them, it'll be a little, a little bit uh, softer. Her body actually has like a shimmer effect to it as well. I am so obsessed with her face. I mean, you can't fault G3 for the body overall. Like the G3 faces, the G3 bodies, and all of that, they're really top notch, and Miss Cathy Noir is no different. Because I wanna give her sculpted hair, I do want to protect the overall piece from cracking so I am filling the inside of her head with epoxy sculpt as well that will prevent the head from being squished. So I will be making the dress for her. Oh my god, I've been having like a moment. I made the dress for Penelope and I made the outfit for Emma Frost and then I'm making this again. Oh my god, my hands. They're gonna hate me for this. So I went to my local fabric store and I got these fabrics. And I really wanted the color to be very specific because I wanted it to match Miss Cathy Noir. And obviously I don't want to go with the hot pink because that is the original Cathy Noir color palette. And also I associate like coquettish and delicate with more delicate colors like pastel powder pinks and everything so I got this one but I love the color of it it's very lightweight and they also recommended because I showed them the picture of the silky dress and they recommended that I get organza um, because they were like it's gonna poof up more and it's just gonna look better overall and I honestly agree god this is kind of like a vibe <gasps> oh my god an organza hoodie or like a skull <gasps> Oh my god, this is like... Um, I got this lavender fabric, and this is actually a lining. The color was perfect, so I usually don't care about the fabric. I mean, at this point, I have to just suck it up. It's gonna fray, whatever. I just have to like deal with it and hem it. We're gonna make the bow out of this, and I thought the color combination of them was just perfect. I'm not excited to do this. Just so you guys know, every time I sew, a fairy loses their wings. <laughs> a mermaid loses their tail. A unicorn loses their horn. You know what I mean? Like, it's not fun. Overall, I really wanted this dress to look really airy and poofy and just really, really delicate looking. And, you know, I was doing my best hand sewing it, of course. You know, we hand sew um, for the most part because Machine, I mean, machine is still involved in this, so yeah, we've been sewing a lot in this channel these past few videos, and I'm not super pleased with it. For some reason, the fabric was very, very wrinkled when I was sewing it, and I just had to really, like, steam it midway. So I just made sure to do my best to get rid of all the wrinkles. I think one of my favorite parts to do when it comes to doll customizing or, like, you know, costuming for the dolls is making bows. For some reason, I I just love bows. I know I don't really use it a lot in my designs. I love it when it's really, really big and obnoxious and it just looks so delicate and I'm just so in love with this color. So here is her outfit. Ah, it looks so, so good. It's simple and, you know, I'm trying to fight the urge to spray glitter all over it because the silky dress doesn't really have glitter, but we'll see. I made her a petticoat tutu underneath as well to really poof it up. Of course, her iconic bow, ah, it's so, so good. And I also made her 
a tiny bow for her tail. This took me a while to make, of course, you know, giving my hands a little bit of break, as I should be, but um, for some reason, creating more like cleaner looking outfits and lines and everything is much harder because you will see more of the imperfections. So yeah, I layered the fabrics and everything. So she's just so, so freaking pretty and I am obsessed with this. Look at that. Ah! Okay, I'm obsessed. Now let's go ahead and start sculpting her hair using epoxy sculpt and as you can see I have taped every feature that I don't want the clay to go onto. So initially I am just covering her entire scalp with a layer of clay and then I go into it and we add all of the ridges and all of the finger wave detailing and so on. For a hairstyle this delicate and elegant, you really want to make sure that you have reference photos on hand when you are sculpting something like this. Just because it's so easy to kind of like stray away from the main goal and the main look that we're trying to achieve. For the most part, I was googling black finger wave hairstyles, 1920s finger waves, and for the most part it actually hasn't changed much, which is really really cool because I personally love a beautiful finger wave and nowadays it is mostly used for elegant events because it is also a very time-consuming hairstyle and I would assume that it's not easy to maintain so it's really really cool that it is still so so popular nowadays and of course we have Miss Josephine Baker to thank for that for popularizing the finger waves which is still very very iconic a hundred years later I decided to sculpt the hair instead of, of course, rebooting or making a wig just because I knew that I was going to be able to get the look a little bit better when I sculpt it versus if I was to reboot or make a wig. For the most part, for all of my dolls, I tend to lean towards what's going to give us the better look, the better execution, and I was more confident with sculpting the hair and styling it this way rather than using like hair or yarn fiber. And also, it was kind of like a way for me to give my hands a little bit of a break from strenuous activities. My hands has been in pain and inflamed, so I thought sculpting it would give it a little bit more of a break. And I haven't really sculpted hair in a while, so I do miss it. I really want this doll to kind of have a vintage look to it um, overall with the eyes. The idea is kind of like an amalgamation of different vintage aesthetics, dolls, art, and whatnot. So I really want to kind of merge the Bradley doll eyes into like a Makoto Takahashi type of eye as well. Just a lot of stars, a lot of catch lights in the eye. I think it's gonna look really, really good. I'm gonna play around with it and see what's gonna work out. I'm really, really excited to do an eye like this again. It's just more fun, it's very, very graphic, and it's just, I mean, it's st starry eyes, you know? It's really cool. Because we're working on a darker skin tone doll, I do want to map out her face using a lighter color pencil. So for this one, I'm using this light purple, which complements her skin anyway, since her skin is purple. This is where you want to do your trial and error when it comes to sketching out the features you want the doll to have. I really wanted her to have heterochromia or two colored eyes. I thought, why not? You know, cats usually have that. And I'm like, why not go for blue and green? And yeah, I thought it would just make everything pop and it would just make her look more unique. Having the lighter purple features drawn on her actually looks really, really cool in hindsight. Of course, we will be toning everything down in the end, but just looking at it right now, I'm like, oh my god, it looks really cool that she has this light purple eyebrow and like the light purple eyeliner. I don't know. It's always like in hindsight when you think about things, but maybe in the future we'll do something like that. 
If you've been watching my videos for quite some time, then you would know that my go-to faces are always the mean-looking faces, the drag queen mean-looking faces, because that's what I love. I really tried to pull back the charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent um, acronym for this look, because I really wanted her to look delicate, soft, and cute. Like, those are the goal, and I really hope that I was able to achieve that. I also tried to really pull back with the blushing overall with her face and everything because um, I kind of tend to have um, blushing and highlighting blindness. I'm sure some of you guys know that and you know I tend to go too much on on those two things which I personally don't mind <laughs> unless people tell me that I've gone too far. Um, but I love them. I just love it. I love it on me. I love it on my dolls. I, you know, I just like to look like a blushing disco ball, you know? I really wanted her eyelashes and her eyebrows to pop a little bit more. And when I was looking at the Bradley dolls, it looks like they really have a light color eyeshadow kind of really surrounding the eyes to really make those eyelashes pop. So that's kind of what I tried for this one. And it actually works out so well because it looks like a natural cat like fur pattern in a way but it just helps really make her eyelashes pop out so much more and it makes them look so so crisp and like thin and just sharp. And now it's time for the fun part, which is her catch lights. And like I said, this is again very much inspired by Makoto Takahashi slash Bradley dolls. And even like the 80s Barbie dolls with the starry eyes. Like, I just love them. I know it doesn't seem like I do love them, but I do love them. Um, especially when the eyes are really, really big. I think it just works so well for this type of doll. Of course, we have to gloss up the hair just to make it look more shiny and a little bit more realistic. And we're also glossing up her lips and also her nose. And to really sell the cat feline fantasy, we are giving her some whiskers. And I'm just using a fishing line for this one. Oh my god, I have not been filming myself, which some of you guys may love it, some of you guys may not, um, so yeah, you know, good or bad, whatever. But I have been reorganizing this studio because I have moved my resin printer setup in the studio, which is not great. It's, it's a health concern for sure, but I am waiting to buy an enclosure. Um, when printing so that all the fumes can just go outside of the window. So we'll see. Vegas has just been so hot. It is literally like like 115 Fahrenheit, almost 50 degrees Celsius. And it's just really, really hot. And I'm just so scared that it will break the printers. So I gotta put them in here. So there's a little bit of rearranging happening. We're not solid on everything, but yeah. And I just wanted to add a pearl in the middle to draw your eyes in. And for her shoes, I am using this rainbow high shoe. I'm not entirely sure who it belongs to, but it is perfect for this overall doll and the look. And honestly, I'm not even going to paint the pink part because like I said, it is perfect. I do want to add a shell to it, of course, and I do want to paint the soles the same lavender, or at least, you know, close to the lavender of her bow.
Now let's go ahead and dress her up. I was kind of struggling trying to figure out a beautiful name for this character that will belong in the Tom and Jerry world. We all know that the white cat from Tom and Jerry is named Toodles Galore. I've always had Purrington, as in Purrington, as a last name for her, and I was just trying to figure out a good first name. And initially, I had Poppy in there because my boyfriend's sister's cat is named Poppy and she is so freaking cute. If you guys watch my Instagram stories, she's always on there. So please say hello to Miss Poppy Purrington. Again, don't forget to download June's Journey using the link below or by scanning the QR code. Happy sleuthing, everyone!